self-tape auditions are a huge part of our industry right now we often have to send through tapes that we recorded ourselves at home through to casting directors all over the country and sometimes overseas as well so it is a skill no matter how daunting it may be for you it is a skill that you really do have to master so today i am here to give you the tea the 411 on how to get your self-tape auditions looking amazing to give you an amazing shot at your audition So hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Dineo Rasidile and I'm a South African television and film actress. Been in the game for 10 years now. And actually, my last production that I shot, I booked from a self-tape audition. So I think I'm knowledgeable enough to give you the tea on how to get yourself tapes looking proper. This video was actually inspired by a comment that I received in my last video. So this was from Tyra Meggs and she asked what do you use for self tapes background color do's and don'ts so i thought why don't i just do a refresher self tape auditions video i did do one over a year ago um that focused mainly on equipment that you can use to shoot your self tapes and you can definitely go back and watch that again the information there will still be relevant today so basically what you need for a good self tape is a camera, a tripod, good lighting, good sound. So we're going to break that down. When I say camera, most phones today have got stellar cameras. So if your camera shoots videos that are not grainy, that are not blurry, um, you'll be fine using just the phone that you have. In fact, I have an iPhone now, but I still use my old Samsung for my self-tape auditions because with good lighting and in a nice quiet room, the videos come out looking really, really nice. With regards to lighting, if you position yourself on across from a window, you should be well lit enough. So basically, you just need to be seen. It shouldn't be dark and there shouldn't be shadows on your face. But generally, if you can position yourself in a room that's got a nice big window that has natural light seeping in, that should be enough. And then with regards to tripod, you kind of need a tripod. But if you can position your phone steady enough um, with your eye line, so your, your camera shouldn't be sitting above or below shooting you from above or shooting you from below it should be like how my camera is positioned right now so if you can position it on something it just shouldn't be in somebody's hand it shouldn't be moving around because that will be very distracting it should be steady so if you can invest in an inner tripod uh do that better yet you can just get those ring lights that have the tripod and the lights together so then you don't need to go look for lighting and for for tripod later on as you invest in your little home recording situation with regards to sound you can just make sure that you are in a quiet room where there isn't any sounds there shouldn't be a fridge or a dog barking or a child talking and playing or people having a conversation in the background it should be a quiet room all that needs to be heard in that video is your voice and the voice of your reader if it is a dialogue use what you have right now and as you grow then you can start investing in your little home recording thing so also remember that when you're using your phone you always shoot in landscape so you never shoot yourself tape audition like this as if you're taking a instagram reel or a selfie video no we always shoot in landscape no one's gonna watch your video if they open it on the computer and they just see this tiny little block of a video so professional always landscape also very important to mention is how you frame yourself so how you frame yourself basically that means how big you appear on the on the video so you should frame yourself basically how i frame myself right now should be good for a self tape you want to be like mid shot framed um but also always read your brief 
to know what your casting director wants from you sometimes they'll ask for a take in a mid shot and then another take in like a close up you just read your brief but generally as long as you're nice and close to the camera in a mid shot don't be shooting yourself tape from far away where they can hardly see your face next that i want to touch on is the location that you're going to record from this is very very important because i can't tell you how many casting directors stress about wanting to focus on you if a casting director sends you a brief trust me they are looking for their goals they want to see good tapes so don't send a tape where you are in a very dis um distracting location so you want a wall with a solid background so when they say solid background they mean a wall that is just gray or just uh white or just um I, I don't know if we have black walls if it's not in a studio but like a solid color no paintings or art or sculptures or whatever behind you clean 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 literally all that needs to be seen in that frame is you do not shoot your self tape with the room behind you so there shouldn't be like dining room table, the kitchen or this bedroom or whatever because I can't tell you how many times I've heard casting directors say that they'll be watching the video and then they'll be looking behind you and saying like, what is that day on the bed? Like, what is that? Did a person just walk past? It? And now all the attention is gone from your performance. So always a solid um, background. It doesn't really matter what the color will be because I think when people ask for self tapes, they generally know that people are gonna be recording these in their homes. So not gonna be ridiculous and say gray background only. But I mean, if you're a person who is an actor and you're gonna take your craft seriously, um, as you grow, you might want to like get you a backdrop or you know have a wall in your house that is painted like a dark gray or something so that your self tapes are always like on point so your reader very important if you are doing a self tape where it is dialogue um you're going to need a reader so the reader is the person who is going to read the other parts in the script that are not your character's lines so they're going to be feeding you your lines basically so this reader guys does not necessarily have to be acting and does not have to be dramatic and stuff they just need to read the lines in a clear audible manner it's not their audition it's yours so if you're asking family you're asking because i've heard some people say oh i asked my mom to read for me and she wants to do the most she will be like theater you know giving they don't need to do that then like no <laughs> they just need to read the words um so your reader is going to stand off camera so they are never with you in the scene they stand off camera and they stand right next to your camera lens so if you see i'm looking into the camera right now and if my reader is placed here you can still see my face and you can still see what i'm doing you're not missing any of my expressions on my face and this is typically where you would want your reader to be you never place your reader somewhere where now we lose your eyes we only see you in profile because now they are losing everything in your performance and it's just not giving what they want to see so off camera reader audible and close to your camera lens um if you don't have somebody in the room with you which is very often my case if i'm out of town um i won't have somebody with me to do it so what i do is i always have two or three people that i call on a zoom call and i just place my laptop close to the camera so that they are audible and then they read for me through the zoom call and that always works lovely for me so if it's a monologue of course you don't necessarily have to worry about that okay your wardrobe what do you wear during your self tape i always say that you need to treat your self tape auditions the very same way that you would treat an in-person audition so whatever you would wear to an in-person audition for that character do it in your self tape audition as well um and i mean i've made a, um, a video about how to choose your wardrobe for your auditions but i mean try to look as close to what the character described looks like don't go too much into now costume and don't go over the top um but obviously if your character is a sporty person and the scene is them like coming out of the gym or whatever you're obviously not going to wear a red ball gown 
in your audition tape you know like just use your discretion and look as close to the character as possible even in your self tape auditions all right so now i'm going to go into the instagram questions that i received this one was from at it's Glen entertainment a day one a vip okay i love you so much so at it's Glen entertainment asked should i be myself when doing the intro or should i have the same energy as the character okay this is actually a very very good question thank you so much for that um so just to explain what the intro is so when you go for an audition or when you send a self tape you do what is called an intro or a slate and that's basically you giving your name your age your agent the the character you are auditioning for where you are based how tall you are what languages you speak are you comfortable with nudity um whatever it is that the casting director wants to know and they can make a note of as they are going through the audition process so it is something that you start every single audition with and it is a very very important part of your audition and it shouldn't be something that you just glaze over or rush through so should you do it in character I never do my slates in character unless the casting director asks me to do so. So the only thing that I do that is very, very important is I have a lot of energy. I put energy into my into my intro. So I will basically, as I walk into the room in an in-person audition, I bring that same energy to my self-tape. So I'll be poised. I'll speak clear. I will have life in my eyes. I will give it energy so it's not just going to be like hi my name is Tina Rasedile I'm auditioning for Sarah and da, da, da. no 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 it's clear it's concise it's 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 um this is my job you know what I'm saying so you always have to give it the energy that it requires I have come across briefs where the casting director asked me to do the the slate in the accent because it was an accent um it needed a particular accent to the audition so they said do your your intro in the accent and in the character as well so once again very important to read your brief and to look at exactly what your casting director wants because casting directors are different some casting directors have little icks that other casting directors don't so every single time you get your brief make sure you read what um the casting director wants also don't take it for granted that your casting director wants certain things you know after you go to an audition um number of times you start to get used to what that casting director wants sometimes that casting director is casting for an international client or a, a, a production that they've that is completely different and particular and they will have to follow those specific um instructions that that director or producer has asked for so every single time you get a brief you need to comb through it and make sure that you didn't miss anything and that you're giving them exactly what they want i also would like to share something that an actor once shared at uh at an acting workshop um this is a big actor local act actress who said that when she does her slates if the if the scene that she's about to do is like an angry moody whatever scene then she'll give her slate in a in a more friendly energetic um energy and then if the if the scene that she's about to do is you know chirpy friendly whatever flirty blah 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 then she'll do her intro in a more serious still lots of energy but in a more serious um tone just for them to see the diversity that she gives you might try that out i don't think i've ever ever used that i think i'm quite neutral in how i do all my slates but i just make sure that it's got life at mobile underscore mbata underscore said how do i know which self tape to send after more than one take so okay this is also a very good question and i think when i started out i used to record take after take after take after take and then it would take the to make the selection process so long so what i do now is i spend more time rehearsing and so that i only take like two three takes max so i i make sure that i rehearse i play around in front of the mirror i see what i want to do and then i record two takes and then i'm done and then i literally have to select between two or three takes what i also do sometimes is that i will 
do a take and then I'll watch it and then I'll see what I don't like and then fix it and then more more likely more most often what happens is the last take that I will do will be the one that I send because I will have fixed and adjusted everything that I want to adjust in my performance this is also the bonus of self tape auditions is that you get to do that when you go in person whatever you did is what you did and if they give you a second take or not you still in that you know that stressful you know um environment you don't really get to say can I see my take and what I did you know so that's the one one um pro that I can say is uh, about self-taping so i will watch my take and then i'll say oh, okay no 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 i wasn't focused there here's what i'm gonna do in the next take da, da, da. and then more often than not the last take will be the take that i choose also another thing that helps is that usually my readers are fellow actors people who have been acting also so we can usually give each other notes and that also helps where they can say hmm, don't you think that there are, and sometimes they see things that you might have missed and that also helps a lot um yeah so i hope that that answers your question um at at manini underscore moreki this is not a question about self tapes but i would really like for you to help me ace my monologues i love you and i look up to you <laughs> stop it oh my gosh <gasps> That is so sweet. Thank you so much for the message. Um, girl, you can DM for hourly rates. It's 2024. We are out here trying to get this back. So, <gasps> performance coach. I would love to. I would love to. But for real though, DM for hourly rates. It's a real thing. I'm more than happy to help you out. Let's go. Let's work. And basically, that answers all the questions that I received for self-tape auditions. Um, I think the most important thing that I would say for you is to make sure that you invest in the equipment that I mentioned earlier in the video that will definitely make your life so much easier because if you are wanting to take this seriously then you do need to invest in yourself and invest in your craft so the better your equipment the better your your self tapes obviously don't now go try and get an iPhone 15 Pro Max right off the bat like I said a lot of cameras can produce really really good quality videos um, but obviously as you grow you want the quality of your work to improve you can start to add more and more things to make your videos all the more you know professional looking um, but another very important thing that I want to reiterate is to read your briefs guys I cannot stress how important it is to read your briefs it even becomes a habit when you're getting at least one audition every week that you sometimes start to skim through because you think you know but i think it was just a week ago where i almost missed an important very important note i can't remember what it was but it was a very important note that i almost missed and i literally something just said go back and read through this and i was like oh my gosh this was going to be very embarrassing for me so make sure you read your briefs and you know exactly what is requested of you for this audition also prepare 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 don't take it for granted that you are going to be recording this thing in your house in your comfortable space and then you just like very lax about it make sure that you prepare for it just as you would any audition that you take it as seriously and that you bring all of yourself just as you would in an in-person audition because trust me as i said now i literally booked my last production major production from sending through a self-tape i didn't have to go in for callbacks i didn't have to go in for i literally got booked from my self-tape so that's how like like big your self-tape audition is that's how serious it is but also just have fun have fun with it like i always say that auditions are so much fun they are stressful yes but enjoy it have fun with it play around this is an opportunity to bring a character to life this is an opportunity to show a casting director a producer a director what it is that you can do so always think of it as you are at work you know you're at work and so bring literally your a game even to your self tape auditions all right so that is it for today's q a on self tape auditions thank you so much to every single person that sent through their questions i appreciate it so much please feel free to comment 
and ask any questions that you know might have come up while i was talking on today's video or anything else that you'd like me to touch on um i'm very happy to um bring new videos based on whatever it is that you feel i need to inform the people on but that is it for today thank you so much for hanging out all the best on your journey and i hope this was very helpful for you thank you so much to all the new subscribers we are inching closer to that first 1k i appreciate every single one of you if you are watching and you made it this far click that subscribe button and become a vip and join me on this journey in the tv and film industry i love sharing it with you guys and i appreciate you so much I will see you on the next video.